Hey guys, welcome to our mobile mouse tutorial on a very easy way that you could uh, tally up or sum alternative columns on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, the most common way, let's say for example uh, in this case we wanted to add up uh, items in the value column. So that would be B, D, F, uh, H, J and L. Um, the most common way we see people do this is they, they start by pressing equals and then they click the first value, they go plus, they click the next one plus and so on and so on and so on and so forth right to get the total so a much simpler way to do that is if we actually utilize the sum if function so let's get you started um, in cell 04 we start off by pressing equals and the function is sum f so what we'll do here is for the range portion we'll simply go ahead and highlight from cell b3 through in this case we could stop at m but we're going to go one cell further here. You'll notice it's a blank column in that we have. Um, this selects an area that I've already named called headings. Now, this extra blank selection, you might be wondering what that's for. Well, later on, if you might want it, you might want to add extra columns into the mix. Um, so, for example, July, August, and so on. And by accommodating an extra cell at the end, it's going to allow your formula to grow automatically. So, we'll demonstrate in a little bit. So, for the range portion, is sum if the range, if the headings, for the criteria, now we want to sum up the columns that contain the word value. Now we could simply go the word, I beg your pardon, we could go the word value enclosed in quotation marks. But what we'll simply do is for the criteria, we've got the word value in cell 03. So we'll simply reference 03. Now we might be copying this down the list and also across the list in a moment. So if I press F4, it's going to absolute column O and also absolute column uh, row 3. Lock it on column O, lock it on row 3. Pressing F4 again, um, you notice it removes the absolute from O and it maintains the reference to row 3. So that means if I was to copy this down the list, right, so down column O, um, what would happen here is it would stay fixated on row 3, always referencing the word value. Now we haven't put a dollar before the O because we might want to copy this across uh, to get the quantity in cell P3. So having done that, we now go comma to get to the sum range. In other words, which cells do you want to sum? So over here, very simply, we're going to go from cell B4 all the way across. Now again, we could stop at M, but we're going to go one cell further. And remember, the reason for this is if we do look to add more columns to the mix later on uh, by accommodating the extra blank at the end, it'll allow us to do this um, and the formula will automatically adjust. So what we'll look to do though is we'll press F4, um, first of all, we'll, ref we'll click into the portion that references cell B4 and we'll press F4 once and then we'll press F4 again. Right now pressing F4 one more time, notice that that's going to basically maintain the formula to be focused on cell B4. So if we do add another column or two into the mix, uh, it'll always start at B. And then we're going to click into the portion that references N4 and again we're going to press F4 again and F4 again, and F4 one more time to maintain the reference to column N. But we're not locking the row 4 reference because we might want to copy this down the list. Now simply having um, completed the, the sum range portion there, we'll just go into the formula bar, close the brackets, and what we're going to do is we're going to press Control Enter to stay fixated or to stay on the cell. Now we copy the formula down the list. You'll notice how that now is basically summing up only items within the value column. Right, so just to prove this, if uh, I was to change, for example, this value over here to say zero, you'll notice what this does is it should deduct 44 from the value, corresponding value. Right, so um, what we'll quickly do here is let's uh, take these formulas and let's copy them across one column. And you'll notice how now what it's doing is it's adding up the quantity column. Um, by being on cell P4 as an example and pressing F2, just getting us into the function, you'll notice how it's basically still using the heading rows, um, but it's using cell P3 now as the criteria and B4 through N4. So here's the great advantage of structuring it the way I have with an extra blank column at the end. If we were to say selecting columns N and O and we were to insert another two columns, Let's say this was going to be the data for, let's say, July. And not that I have to do this, but I'll merge and center just briefly. And we'll go value. And we'll go quantity. Right. So if I was to say add another five to the value, 
you notice that the value increases. And of course, if I was to add, say, two to the quantity, the quantity automatically tallies up. Now, the great flexibility about this is, of course, um, having used some if, if these headings were to change, you'll notice it affects the corresponding quantity. Also, of course, if these headings over here were to change, it would then add up the corresponding column. Right, so it makes it very easy to do. So guys, um, hopefully you got something out of this little tip and trick for Microsoft Excel, some of great little function. Um, this is just another one of its potential applications. Um, thanks for your time. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you sometime in the future. Cheers for now.